Welcome to St. Simon's Parish on this Palm Sunday, the Passion of the Lord. Please stand as we begin the commemoration of the Lord's entrance into Jerusalem. Well, welcome to you all, and that very much includes our online congregation and 89.9 The Light, who our Mass for Palm Sunday, sometimes called Passion Sunday, and of course the reading of the suffering and death of Jesus, referred to as the Passion, is a very central part of what we commemorate today. But as Palm Sunday, the liturgy is divided into not two halves, the first part's quite short, the blessing of the palms and a recognition and commemoration of the entry of Jesus into Jerusalem only a few days before he would be arrested and so-called tried and tortured and then crucified. It indicates people who welcomed him with so much gusto on the Sunday were prepared to yell for his death just a few days later, such as, sadly, the changeability of human nature. So a lot of lessons for all of us to learn and take on board in these coming days of Holy Week. Dear friends, for the five weeks of Lent, we've been preparing by works of charity and self-sacrifice for the celebration of the Lord's Paschal Mystery. Today we come together to begin this solemn celebration in union with the whole church throughout the world. Jesus entered in triumph into his own city to complete his work as our Messiah, to suffer, to die and to rise again. We remember with devotion this entry which began his saving work and we follow him as best we can with a lively faith. United with him in his suffering on the cross, may we share his resurrection and gain new life. Now I have the blessing of the palms and at the actual church masses, which this year, of course, will have people attending in hopefully reasonably large numbers. The people will be holding the palms as they are blessed. So you might have an imaginary palm at home if you're watching this on your phone or listening on the radio. Almighty God, we pray you bless these branches and make them holy. Today we joyfully acclaim Jesus as our Messiah and our King. May we one day reach the happiness of the new and everlasting Jerusalem by faithfully following him who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to St. Mark. Glory to you, O Lord. When they were approaching Jerusalem in the sight of Bethphage and Bethany, close by the Mount of Olives, Jesus sent two of his disciples, and he said to them, Go off to the village facing you, and as soon as you enter it, you will find a tethered colt that no one has yet ridden. Untie it and bring it here. And if anyone says to you, What are you doing? Just say, the master needs it and will send it back here directly. So they went off and they found a colt tethered near a door in the open street. As they untied it, some men standing there said, what are you doing untying that colt? And they gave them the answer that Jesus had told them and the men let them go. Then they took the colt to Jesus and they threw their cloaks on its back and he sat on it. Many people spread their cloaks on the road, others greenery, which they had cut from the fields. And those who went in front and those who followed were all shouting, Hosanna, 
blessing on him who comes in the name of the Lord, blessings on the coming kingdom of our father David, Hosanna in the highest heavens. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. the entry of Jesus into Jerusalem a few days before he would suffer and die, we now move into the Mass celebrating the Lord's Passion. The focal point, of course, is the reading of the Passion, which this year will be from the Gospel of St Mark. Let us pray. Almighty, ever-living God, as an example of humility for the human race to follow, you caused our Saviour to take flesh and to submit to the cross. Graciously grant that we may heed his lesson of patient suffering and so gain a share in his resurrection. And we ask this through Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns for ever and ever. Amen. In the first reading, Prophet Isaiah tells the people of Israel that he stands firm, resting in God's promises, even when persecuted. The first reading is from the prophet Isaiah. The Lord has given me a disciple's tongue, so that I may know how to reply to the wearied. He provides me with speech. Each morning he wakes me to hear, to listen like a disciple. The Lord has opened my ear. For my part, I made no resistance, neither did I turn away. I offered my back to those who struck me, my cheeks to those who tore at my beard. I did not cover my face against insult and spittle. The Lord comes to my help so that I am untouched by the insults. 
So, too, I set my face like flint. I know I shall not be shamed. This is the word of the Lord. The response to the psalm. My God, my God, why have you abandoned me? My God, my God, why have you abandoned me? All who see me deride me. They curl their lips, they toss their heads. He trusted in the Lord, let him save him. Let him release him if this is his friend. My God, my God, why have you abandoned me? Many dogs have surrounded me. A band of the wicked beset me. They tear holes in my hands and my feet. I can count every one of my bones. My God, my God, why have you abandoned me? They divide my clothing among them. They cast lots for my robe. O Lord, do not leave me alone. My strength, make haste to help me. My God, my God, why have you abandoned me? I will tell of your name to my brethren and praise you where they are assembled. You who fear the Lord, give him praise. All sons of Jacob, give him glory. Revere him, Israel's sons. My God, my God, why have you abandoned me? In the second reading, Christ was obedient even unto death, and God exalted him. The second reading is from the letter of St. Paul to the Philippians. His state was divine, yet Christ Jesus did not cling to his equality with God, but emptied himself to assume the condition of a slave and became as men are. And being as all men are, he was humbler yet, even to accepting death, death on a cross. But God raised him high and gave him the name which is above all other names, so that all beings in the heavens, on earth, and in the underworld should bend the knee at the name of Jesus, and that every tongue should acclaim Jesus Christ as Lord, to the glory of God the Father. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Would you please welcome the gospel with the acclamation. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ, King of endless glory. Christ became obedient for us even to death, dying on the cross. Therefore God raised him on high and gave him a name above all other names. Praise, Praise to you, Lord Jesus, Lord Jesus Christ, Christ, King of endless glory. Over the years it's been common for people to remain standing during the reading of the Passion as a mark of respect, but also it's become for many people a sense of an endurance test as well, which can be distracting for us from the actual story that we're meant to take on board and contemplate. So particularly for those watching online, some people might, might stand because, well, we always stand, but... Can I suggest that, in fact, if you are seated and really listen or read and listen, as you might be doing, it gives an opportunity for you to really take on board the wonderful message of this timeless story. The Passion of Our Lord Jesus Christ, according to Mark. It was two days before the Passover and the Feast of Unleavened Bread. And the chief priests and scribes were looking for a way to arrest Jesus by some trick and have him put to death. For they said, It must, it must not be during the festivities, festivities or, or there, there will be a disturbance among the people. Jesus was at Bethany in the house of Simon the leper. He was at dinner when a woman came in with an alabaster jar of very costly ointment, pure nard. She broke the jar and poured the ointment on his head. Some who were there said to one another indignantly, Why this waste of ointment? 
ointment like this could have been sold for over 300 denarii and the money given to the poor. And they were angry with her. But Jesus said, Leave her alone. Why are you upsetting her? What she has done for me is one of the good works. You have the poor with you always, and you can be kind to them whenever you wish. But you will not always have me. She has done what was in her power to do. She has anointed my body beforehand for its burial. I tell you solemnly, wherever throughout all the world the good news is proclaimed, what she has done will be told also in remembrance of her. Judas Iscariot, one of the twelve, approached the chief priest with an offer to hand Jesus over to them. They were delighted to hear it and promised to give him money. And he looked for a way of betraying him when the opportunity should occur. On the first day of unleavened bread, when the Passover lamb was sacrificed, his disciples said to him, Where do you want us to go and make the preparation for you to eat the Passover? So he sent two of his disciples, saying to them, Go into the city, and you will meet a man carrying a pitcher of water. Follow him, and say to the owner of the house which he enters, the master says, where is my dining room in which I can eat the Passover with my disciples? He will show you a large upper room furnished with couches and all prepared. Make the preparations for us there. The disciples set out and went to the city and found everything as he had told them and prepared the Passover. When evening came, he arrived with the twelve. And while they were at the table eating, Jesus said, I tell you solemnly, one of you is about to betray me, one of you eating with me. They were distressed and asked him one after another. Not I, surely. He said to them, It is one of the twelve, one who is dipping into the same dish with me. Yes, the Son of Man is going to his fate, as the Scriptures say he will. But alas for that man by whom the Son of Man is betrayed. Better for that man if he had never been born. And as they were eating, he took some bread, and when he had said the blessing, he broke it and gave it to them, saying, Take it, this is my body. Then he took a cup, and when he had returned thanks, he gave it to them, and all drank from it, and he said to them, This is my blood, the blood of the covenant, which is to be poured out for many. I tell you solemnly, I shall not drink any more wine until the day I drink the new wine in the kingdom of God. After the psalms had been sung, they left for the Mount of Olives, and Jesus said to them, You will all lose faith. For well, the scripture says, I shall strike the shepherd and the sheep will be scattered. However, after my resurrection, I shall go before you to Galilee. Peter said, Even if all lose faith, I will not. And Jesus said to him, I tell you solemnly, this day, this very night, before the cock crows twice, you will have disowned me three times. But he repeated still more earnestly, If I have to die with you, I will never disown you. And they all said the same. They came to a small estate called Gethsemane, and Jesus said to his disciples, Stay here while I pray. Then he took Peter and James and John with him, and a sudden fear came over him and great distress. And he said to them, My soul is sorrowful to the point of death. Wait here and keep awake. And going on a little further, he threw himself on the ground and prayed that if it were possible, this hour might pass him by. He said, Abba, Father, 
everything is possible for you. Take this cup away from me, but let it be as you, not I, would have it. He came back and found them sleeping, and he said to Peter, Simon, are you asleep? Had you not the strength to keep awake for one hour? You should be awake, praying not to be put to the test. The spirit is willing, but the flesh is weak. Again he went away and prayed, saying the same words. And once more he came back and found them sleeping. Their eyes were so heavy, and they could find no answer for him. He came back a third time and said to them, You can sleep on now and take your rest. It is all over. The hour has come. Now the Son of Man is to be betrayed into the hands of sinners. Get up, let us go. My betrayer is close at hand already. Even while he was still speaking, Judas, one of the twelve, came up with a number of men, armed with swords and clubs, sent by the chief priests and scribes and the elders. Now the traitor had arranged a signal with them. He had said, The one I kiss, he is the man. Take him in charge and see he's well guarded when you lead him away. So when the traitor came, he went straight up to Jesus and said, Rabbi, and kissed him. The others seized him and took him in charge. Then one of the bystanders drew his sword and struck out at the high priest's servant and cut off his ear. Then Jesus spoke. Am I a brigand that you had to set out to capture me with swords and clubs? I was among you teaching in the temple day after day, and you never laid hands on me. But this is to fulfill the scriptures. And they all deserted him and ran away. A young man who followed him had nothing on but a linen cloth. They caught hold of him, but he left the cloth in their hands and ran away naked. They led Jesus off to the high priest and all the chief priests and the elders and the scribes assembled there. Peter had followed him at a distance, right into the high priest's palace, and was sitting with the attendants, warming himself at the fire. The chief priest and the whole Sanhedrin were looking for evidence against Jesus on which they might pass the death sentence but they could not find any. Several indeed brought false evidence against him, but the evidence was conflicting. Some stood up and submitted this false evidence against him. We heard him say, I am going to destroy this temple made by human hands, and in three days build another, not made by human hands. But even on this point, the evidence was conflicting. The high priest then stood up before the whole assembly and put this question to Jesus. Have you no answer to that? What is this evidence these men are bringing against you? But he was silent and made no answer at all. The high priest put a second question to him. Are you the Christ, the Son of the Blessed One? Jesus said, I am, and you will see the Son of Man seated at the right hand of the power and coming with the clouds of heaven. The high priest tore his robes and said, What need of witnesses have we now? You heard the blasphemy. What is your finding? And they all gave their verdict. He deserved to die. Some of them started spitting at him and blindfolding him, began hitting him with their fists and shouting, Play, Play the, the prophet. prophet now. And the attendants rained blows on him. While Peter was down below in the courtyard, 
one of the high priest's servant girls, came up. She saw Peter warming himself there, stared at him, and said, You two were with Jesus, the man from Nazareth. But he denied it, saying, I do not know. I do not understand what you are talking about. And he went out into the forecourt. The servant girl saw him and again started telling the bystanders, This fellow is one of them. But he again denied it. A little later, the bystanders themselves said to Peter, You are one of them for sure. Why, you are a Galilean. But he started calling curses on himself and swearing, I do not know the man you speak of. At that moment, the cock crew for the second time. And Peter recalled how Jesus had said to him, Before the cock crows twice, you will have disowned me three times. And he burst into tears. First thing in the morning, the chief priest, together with the elders and the scribes, in short, the whole Sanhedrin had their plan ready. They had Jesus bound and took him away and handed him over to Pilate. Pilate questioned him. Are you the king of the Jews? He answered, It is you who say it. And the chief priest brought many accusations against him. Pilate questioned him again. Have you no reply at all? See how many accusations they are bringing against you. But to Pilate's amazement, Jesus made no further reply. At festival time, Pilate used to release a prisoner for them, anyone they asked for. Now a man called Barabbas was then in prison with the rioters who had committed murder during the uprising. When the crowds went up, and began to ask Pilate the customary favor, Pilate answered them, Do you want me to release for you the king of the Jews? For he realized it was out of jealousy that the chief priest had handed Jesus over. The chief priests, however, had incited the crowd to demand that he should release Barabbas for them instead. Then Pilate spoke again. But in that case, what am I to do with the man you call King of the Jews? They shouted back, Crucify him. Pilate asked them, Why? What harm has he done? But they shouted all the louder, Crucify him. So Pilate, anxious to placate the crowd, released Barabbas for them, and having ordered Jesus to be scourged, handed him over to be crucified. The soldiers led him away to the inner part of the palace, that is the praetorium, and called the whole cohort together. They dressed him up in purple, twisted some thorns into a crown, and put it on him. And they began saluting him. Hail, King, King of, the of the Jews. Jews. They struck his head with a reed and spat on him and they went down on their knees to do him homage. And when they had finished making fun of him, they took off the purple and dressed him in his own clothes. They led him out to crucify him. They enlisted a passerby, Simon of Cyrene, father of Alexander and Rufus, who was coming in from the country to carry his cross. They brought Jesus to the place called Golgotha, which means the place of the skull. They offered him wine mixed with myrrh, but he refused it. Then they crucified him and shared out his clothing, casting lots to decide what each should get. It was the third hour when they crucified him. The inscription giving the charge against him read, The King of the Jews. And they crucified two robbers with him, 
one on his right and one on his left. The passers-by jeered at him. They shook their heads and said, Ah, so you so destroyed destroy the, the temple and rebuild it in three days. days. Then save yourself. Come, come down, down from the cross. The chief priests and the scribes mocked him among themselves in the same way. They said, He saved others. He cannot save himself. Let the Christ, the King of Israel, come down from the cross now for us to see it and believe. Even those who were crucified with him taunted him. When the sixth hour came, there was darkness over the whole land until the ninth hour. And at the ninth hour, Jesus cried out in a loud voice, Eloi, Eloi, lama sabachthani. This means, my God, my God, why have you deserted me? When some of those who stood by heard this, they said, Listen, he is calling on Elijah. Someone ran and soaked a sponge in vinegar, and putting it on a reed, they gave it to him to drink, saying, Wait and see if Elijah will come to take him down. But Jesus gave a loud cry and breathed his last. And the veil of the temple was torn into two from top to bottom. The centurion who was standing in front of him had seen how he died and he said, In truth, this man was a son of God. There were some women watching from a distance. Among them were Mary of Magdala, Mary, who was the mother of James the Younger, and Joseph and Salome. They used to follow him and look after him when he was in Galilee. And there were many other women there who had come up to Jerusalem with him. It was now evening, and since it was preparation day, that is, the vigil of the Sabbath, there came Joseph of Arimathea, a prominent member of the council, who himself lived in hope of seeing the kingdom of God. And he boldly went to Pilate and asked for the body of Jesus. Pilate, astonished that he should have died so soon, summoned the centurion and inquired if he was already dead. Having been assured of this by the centurion, he granted a corpse to Joseph, who brought a shroud, took Jesus down from the cross, wrapped him in the shroud, and laid him in a tomb, which had been hewn out of the rock. He then rolled a stone against the entrance of the tomb. Mary of Magdala and Mary the mother of Joseph were watching and took note of where he was laid. We hope that has been a, a helpful way to enter into Holy Week with that reading of the Lord's Passion and just take this opportunity for those of you listening on 89.9 The Light or watching on our YouTube channel to just give you every encouragement during this Holy Week to participate if you're in a position, of course, to attend either here at St Simon's or at your local church, obviously that's to be valued, and particularly maybe this year, seeing as we could not do that last year, as part of Holy Thursday, Good Friday and Easter with personal engagement at Mass and at church. But for many, of course, that may not be possible. People who are shut in or all sorts of other commitments and so on, people who are sick, and hopefully our... 89.9 The Light and YouTube connection will be helpful. And the beauty particularly of the YouTube connection is that you can call it up, so to speak, whenever you can within whatever schedule you're doing. So it's a 
dare I use that word again, an unprecedented time for us to live the mysteries of the story of Holy Week in a very special way, notwithstanding other commitments we might have along the way. Let us now together profess our faith. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From there he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Amen. As we now remember the Lord Jesus, who died for all people, let us come before God with our prayers. We pray for Pope Francis and all church leaders. May they be inspired by the example of the suffering servant to continue in their mission to call Christians to a sense of service to others. Lord, hear us. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for the work of Project Compassion and Caritas. May our contributions, like the efforts of Simon of Cyrene, help to lighten the load of communities struggling to make their way. Lord, hear us. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for those being received into the church this Easter. May they be supported and encouraged to live the Christian call to worship and service that they have chosen. Lord, hear us. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for our parish community of St. Simon's as we journey with Jesus through his passion and death, we pray that we will all come to a deeper understanding and acceptance of what this means to us. Lord, hear us. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for the sick and the suffering that they will be healed. We pray for those who have died recently especially Antonio Moratore. We also pray for Michael Lascom, Kevin Ald, Belmira Rodriguez, and all whom we hold sacred in our hearts. May they be welcomed into the heavenly banquet prepared for them. Lord, hear us. Lord, hear our prayer. As has become now our custom in this new year, at St. Simon's, we just take a few moments, just 20 seconds or so of quiet prayer and silence in our hearts to place before the Lord those prayers most important to us, be they for ourselves or for others. Lord, hear us. Lord, hear our prayer. Merciful Father, by the holy cross of Christ, your Son has redeemed the world. Help us to be united to Jesus in his passion with Mary, his mother, for Jesus is our Lord, now and forever. Amen.
Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation. Through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you, fruit of the earth and work of human hands. It will become for us the bread of life. Blessed be God forever. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation. Through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you, fruit of the vine and work of human hands. It will become our spiritual drink. Blessed be God forever. Lord, we ask you to receive us, who please, the sacrifice we offer you with humble and contrite hearts. Let us pray that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. Lord, through the passion of your only begotten Son, may our reconciliation with you be near at hand. We do not merit that reconciliation by our own deeds, but by this sacrifice made once and for all, May we feel already the effect of your mercy. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For though innocent, he suffered willingly for sinners and accepted unjust condemnation to save the guilty. His death has washed away our sins and his resurrection has purchased our justification. And so with all the angels we praise you as in joyful celebration we acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and Giving thanks, he broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity together with Francis, our Pope, Peter, our Bishop, all the clergy and all your people. 
Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may be heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honour are yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Saviour's command, and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Saviour, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, you said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will. You live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us now offer each other a sign of friendship and peace in Christ. Lamb of God. You take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those who are called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof. Only say the word and my soul shall be healed. At this time last year, we we're just beginning to recognise the impact of the COVID shutdowns, not knowing at the end of March, beginning of April, just how long they would continue. And the loss of the Eucharist in terms of personal reception was particularly keenly felt by many people. But throughout that time, not just here at St Simon's on our own YouTube masses, but right across the world, this little spiritual communion prayer penned many years ago, I think by St. Alphonsus Liguri, I think it's credit for it, but does help us enter into the mystery of the Eucharist, even when we are unable to personally receive it through any number of personal circumstances that come our way. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in this most holy sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come spiritually into my heart. 
I embrace you as if you were already there, and I unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. O oh Lord, I am not worthy that thou shouldst come to me, but speak the words of comfort, my spirit. Let us pray. Lord, nourished with these sacred gifts, we humbly beseech you that you may lead us to where you call us. Through the death of your Son, you have brought us to hope for what we believe. By his resurrection, may you lead us to where you call. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Thank you for being with us, whether on 89.9 The Light, or on our YouTube channel for this Palm Sunday Mass. Just a reminder that looking ahead next week, Easter Sunday, for our 89.9 listeners, we will be here again with an Easter Mass for you, fresh out of St Simon's. But a reminder, the night before, or the time before, is the Daylight Saving Changeover. So just keep it in mind that Mass will be at 7 a.m. on 89.9 The Light, but it will be the daylight saving changeover after we have turned our clocks back the night before. It will be tricky at any time, let alone at Easter. But again, just encourage you, all our timetable for the Holy Week ceremonies on Holy Thursday, Good Friday and Holy Saturday and Easter Sunday, of course, that will all be there on our website at www. It's hard to say those together, isn't it? Well, the three W's, stsimonsparish.com.au, and you'll find on our website all the different ceremonies and masses that we have to try and help you observe Holy Week as effectively and prayerfully as possible. In the meantime, may it be a peaceful and a helpful Holy Week for you. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let us go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God. Worship His Majesty. 
Jesus who died, now glorified, King of all kings. Majesty, worship His majesty. Unto Jesus be all glory, power, and Kingdom authority flows from his throne unto his own, his anthem reigns. So exalt, lift up on high the name of Jesus. Magnify, come glorify Christ Jesus the King. His majesty, Jesus who died, now glorified, King of all kings. Jesus who died, now glorified, King of all For over half a century, Project Compassion has been bringing supporters of Caritas Australia together in an extraordinary demonstration of faith, love and generosity. As one of our nation's longest running charity campaigns, Project Compassion's iconic collection boxes have become a fond and nostalgic part of our lives. A visible reminder around homes, schools, churches and the community that it's that time of year to support Caritas Australia's annual Lenten Appeal. And this little box makes change. Transforming lives around the world. We want to thank the people of Australia for their generosity and for what they have done for our community. Over half a century, we have raised more than $500 million to help support the world's most remote, vulnerable and marginalised communities overcome the challenges of living with poverty. Thanks to your generous support, across five decades of natural disasters, conflicts, refugee crises and food and water shortages, Caritas Australia has worked alongside vulnerable communities in Africa, Asia, the Middle East, Latin America, the Pacific, and our first Australian communities. I'm so grateful for the relationship that I've had with Caritas. Shukran la Caritas Australia ala hada daam, la anu hada daam biati aman. Thanks to you, uh, the indigenous uh, community now can have uh, their own dreams, their own hopes, so they can make sure the future will be better for them. I want to thank the people who are in Australia for all the love and the respect. During COVID-19, our local partnerships on the ground have enabled us to respond quickly to minimise the spread of coronavirus. By adjusting our existing programmes, Working through our extensive international humanitarian network, we have been able to share COVID-19 prevention measures, distribute soap, masks and food kits while continuing our long-term development work. Predictions that extreme poverty rates are set to rise for the first time in 20 years, Caritas Australia needs supporters like you now more than ever. Caritas Australia's project has had a good effect on my life. Proyekto ng Caritas Australia. This year, Caritas Australia has presented five powerful stories of hope and resilience about people in vulnerable communities who, in the face of remarkable challenges, are striving to be more. For the first time, I felt cared for. 
accepted and that I could be more. As we celebrate the Australian icon that is Project Compassion, we would like to thank you and generations of supporters nationwide for your commitment to bringing about positive change. Thank you for aspiring to be more. Thank you very much, Characters Australia. Thank you, Project Compassion. Terima kasih, Caritas Australia. Thank you, Caritas Australia. Thank you, Project Compassion. Please give generously to Project Compassion today. <laughs>